Look at this beautiful Christmas tree. No, it's not Christmas. But today we are diving into the world of plants like these and their cousins. These trees belong to the plant division Gymnosperms, the first plants to produce seeds. But hey, why did we need seed producing plants in the first place? Let's find out. We have already met the cryptogams, the algae, the bryophytes and the pteridophytes. They are the seedless plants. They were cool but they had some issues. Take the pteridophytes for example. They were stuck with two problems. One, they needed water to reproduce which kept them tied to damp and shady places. Two, they reproduced using spores which were fragile, had no stored food and could easily dry out in land environments. Now the gymnosperms, they evolved to solve both these problems. The first problem was solved by packaging the sperm inside tiny protective cases called pollen grains and letting the wind carry them to the female parts of the plant. Now the second problem was solved by coming up with the ground breaking seeds and I mean quite literally. Seeds carried a baby plant or the embryo which was formed after fertilization. They had a protective coat and they stored food to keep the baby plant alive until the conditions were right. Once the conditions were right, the seeds germinated, broke through the ground. And the formation of seeds actually changed the course of plant evolution. The seeds could be dispersed to far off places while the baby plant stays protected. And that way, gymnosperms could now colonize all of land. Okay, so gymnosperms produce pollen grains and seeds produce pollen grains and seeds. What else? Let's start with the leaves. Gymnosperms have some of the most ornamental leaves in the plant world. Some like the ginkgo biloba, they have fan shaped leaves. And you know what? Ginkgo have been here since the time dinosaurs ruled our planet. And it hasn't changed a bit since then. And that's why it's considered a living fossil. Others have needle-like leaves, like the ones you see on Christmas tree or on pine trees. Even the giant sequa, which is one of the tallest tree species on earth, it is a gymnosperm with needle-like leaves. And gymnosperms, they don't shed their leaves seasonally. As a result, they remain green all year round and hence are called as evergreen plants. After leaves, let's look at their stems. Gymnosperms have thick, woody, super sturdy stems. They can be branched like in pine tree or unbranched like in cycas. The sturdiness of these stems matter because they help the plant stand tall, competing for sunlight and surviving in harsh environments. And finally, let's get down to their roots. Of course, gymnosperms being tall trees, they have well-developed root systems that go deep into the soil and anchor them and help them absorb water and minerals. However, some gymnosperms form interesting mutual friendships underground. In cycas, for example, the roots have cyanobacteria, which help fix nitrogen from the air. And in pinus, the roots have an association with fungi. We call these associations mycorrhiza and they help absorb water and minerals more efficiently. Now, ornamental leaves, woody trunks and strong roots, is that all that we see while looking at a gymnosperm? Look carefully. Do you see these hard scaly structures hanging from a gymnosperm? Those are the cones of the plant. They are the reproductive structures. And there are two kinds of cones. Male cones that make pollen grains and the female cones that house the eggs. Now both the cones either grow on the same plant on different branches or they grow on different plants. The wind carries the pollen from the male cone to the female cone and that is where fertilization takes place and the ovule turns into a naked seed called so because there is no fruit covering it and that is actually where the name gymnosperm comes from. Gymno means naked and sperm means seed. The seed then gets dispersed by wind, water or even by animals and grows into new plants. So that is how gymnosperms reproduce and make more of themselves. 
Now, because gymnosperms make seeds, they belong to a broader category of seed bearing plants called phanerogams. The other one in this category are the angiosperms, which we will talk about in the next video. Now let's take a look at some examples of gymnosperms. We have pinus, we have cycas, we have ginkgo and we have sequa. We have more like cedrus, ephedra, thuja, so on and so forth. So that's it about gymnosperms. Now let's go for a quick recap. Gymnosperms are the first seed producing land plants. And they use pollen grains, they grow naked seeds, they have true roots, stems and leaves. They have ornamental leaves actually and they're evergreen plants. They have branched or unbranched stems and they form symbiotic relationships sometimes with fungi or cyanobacteria and their reproductive structures are the cones.